Hello guys and welcome to Channel X24. Today we're going to be talking about building a battery bank for off-grid power systems. Alright, so we're doing a wee bit of an overhaul on the off-grid Buffy's power system. And it's a solar powered system. And um, we're going to be basically be adding more batteries uh, to this system and we're going to be moving the batteries from where they are at the moment which is inside and we're going to be moving those into sort of a dedicated battery cabinet outside so we're taking this opportunity to upgrade the batteries that we have and add more batteries to the battery bank so previously we just had two of these 60 amp hour FLA lead acid deep cycle batteries and that was you know okay but it wasn't great at all because what was actually happening was it, it meant that they were just over discharging. If you get a lead acid battery, you can only discharge it to about 50% of its capacity. So in this case, these are 60 amp hour batteries. You can only actually discharge them, get about 30 amp hours of power out of them. If you discharge them more than 50%, you end up actually damaging uh, your cells. So it's not good to do that. So the battery bank that we're going to be putting in here is going to be six of these batteries. I've got four here at the moment. So that's going to give us 180 amp hours of actual storage capacity, but I believe it's 360 uh, normally. Makes sense, right? We can only use 50%. What was happening before was that we had two of these batteries, so we had 60 amp hours of actual usable storage rather than 120. And what was happening was it was just being discharged too much basically, so beyond 50% quite regularly, which was going to damage the batteries. So we needed more batteries. And when you're building an off-grid system, it's better to have more batteries so that you can discharge with the 50% but still have enough power. What we're looking at with this system is six batteries. There, there are four here. What I was originally going to do was take the two batteries that we already were using and throw those into this system. But after doing a wee bit of reading on that, and there's a bit of difference of opinion, but the general consensus seems to be that um, if you're wanting to get some fresh batteries and put them into your system, you shouldn't use the old batteries in that system because that can cause issues. I think you get a bit more resistance in the older batteries because the, they've been aged, and that, that can cause issues for the, for the other batteries in the system, and it can bring the the lifespan of the system, even if you've got all these new batteries, down to what the old batteries were at. So I went ahead and ordered a couple more of these brand new batteries so we can put those all together and have six batteries. So before we went and actually wanted to go and connect these together, uh, we want to go and test and make sure these batteries are all sitting at the same voltage. And if you're buying these uh, new, they should all be at the same voltage and you should have anything to worry about. But we're just going to make sure. So we've got our voltmeter here set to the 20 volt setting. And we're going to go and measure the voltage on these batteries. 12.77, 12.75, 12 12.78. So you can see there, they're all pretty much the same, which is good. Alright, so let's have a look at these batteries now. These are 60 amp hour lead acid FLA batteries and they're deep cycle, so they're made for leisure use. Like we're going to be using them for, you know, running household appliances and things. These are FLA batteries and these differ from AGM batteries in the fact that these are need to be vented, basically. So when you take these caps out of here, these are new for transport, they leave these caps in. Once you take these caps out, the batteries are going to vent, um, I believe it's, it's hydrogen gas out of these as well as uh, another type of gas that can be uh, that can be bad now I think you know we had two of these batteries sitting inside and that was kind of okay with uh, people staying there and um, they were in kind of a cupboard and there was always a window open and everything so it was okay but once we're adding more batteries I think it's much better to put them outside since you know <laughs> there's gonna be more gas coming off of these things as opposed to AGM batteries you have to watch these because they can spill so you want to make sure they're they're fixed upright. The advantage of these batteries though is they're cheaper than AGM batteries. So if you get FLA, they'll be a they'll be a bit cheaper, which is uh, 
which is always great. And they're very heavy as well. There's a, like a ton of arguments why you should go and buy lithium batteries. And I, I think lithium batteries obviously make a, make a lot of sense. They've got like, longer lifespans and you can discharge them deeper. But they're very cost prohibitive. And we're on a kind of uh, a budget for this system. So the starting cost has kind of got to be low. The, the other good thing about these batteries is that they are quite recyclable as well. You can recycle lithium batteries, but I don't think the infrastructure is quite there everywhere yet. You know, FLA lead acid batteries, they've been around for ages. So there's a good recycling infrastructure for these things. The system in the Buffy is a 12 volt system. So that means we need to keep the system at 12 volt, but we need to add these extra batteries in. So when we build our battery bank, we're going to be wiring it in parallel. And that means that each battery is parallel to the last one. So we're connecting positive to positive, positive to positive, positive to positive, and the same with the negative. What this does is it keeps the voltage the same. When you wire things in parallel, they keep the, the voltage stays the same, but the amperage increases. So the amp powers of these batteries as a, as a bank increases over all from the 60 we had originally, it will go up to 180. But we will maintain those 12 volts going in there. So there's a couple of ways you could uh, fix these all together. One is to just add copper pipe between all of these terminals, you could beat down some copper pipe and have that going along. Make a long sort of bar connecting these together. I'm going to be using some heavy duty cable to connect these together. If we take a look at these lugs here, we're going to connect an adapter onto here so that we can fit a lugged cable onto these points here. So what we're going to basically need to do is measure the distance we need. We're going to want to cut our cable down and then we're going to want to crimp the lugs onto the cable. So to connect our battery bank together, we're going to be using these terminal connectors and these sit over here. And I think I'm going to connect them like this because I want the shortest run of cable that I can get away with. All right, so I've put all my terminal adapters on here now and I've chosen to kind of angle these off to the side, which means that when I go and tighten these down, I can actually get my tool in there. And once I've got these on, I've put the lugs that I'm going to use for this cabling on here. And then I've decided on the cable length that I want to use to join all these together. And I think I'll get away with using the same cable length for even these different connectors there. And it'll, it should work just fine. So then I just need to make up loads of cables. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and make up a cable now that looks like this. So we've got our two lugs on each end. And we basically need to crimp those onto a length of cable. We found out what length of cable we needed earlier. I'm just using this little bit of cable here as a guide, so we know how long it needs to be. And obviously when you're doing this, you need to leave enough for there to be cable to go inside of this lug, inside there, on each side. So let's go ahead and put this cable together. So we're going to get our roll of cable here. Straighten a bit of it out here. And then we'll match our other piece of cable here so we know the length against it, so we know where we need to cut. And for cutting, I'm going to use these snips here. There's other ways you could cut this cable. You can get big cable snips and things for these. I tried to use a, a hacksaw before, and that really didn't work very well. So I wouldn't recommend using that. It tends to pull all the wires out. So uh, get the proper tools for the job. This cable's pretty thick, but the snips of this size pretty cleanly through it. So get a lug here, and when it comes to fastening this onto the end of here, we need to make a mark, and we want this copper wires inside the cable here to get right up to this part here. So we're getting a really good connection. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that on there. Now I'm going to use a knife to remove this and the trick with this is just to do it very carefully, keep it a right angle to the cable and you don't have to go all the way down because once you get, and you get a feel for this, you can actually start to twist the cable and it'll just come apart like that. And you don't want to go too far down because then you're going to start cutting these wires on the inside if you're so then we can go and pop the lug over there. We can see that sits on, we've got copper wire 
at the end there and it's sitting nice and flush against that cable so that's pretty nice. Now the next part of this is using this this crimper here. Now you can get hydraulic crimpers that are much more expensive but this is quite a cost effective way of crimping uh, these larger lugs on here. Basically this is just a, a hammer that concentrates the force and it's got these shaped bits of metal on the inside of here that are designed to crimp the lug around that wire and get a really nice connection on there. So you want to just sit this down on a block of wood. I also recommend wearing some hearing protection when you're doing this because it ends up being quite loud. So you're going to go ahead and sit the lug in there and then we'll go and pop our cable in and then we're just going to hold it there and give it a tap. Now we can take our hand away and really flack this thing. It usually sticks on the inside there a little bit. It's made a really nice tight connection and just to check that it's it's feeling nice and tight after you put that on. Get some electrical tape. You could also use heat shrink around here, but I found that heat shrink, it's just you need quite a large heat shrink to do this, and electrical tape's just a little bit easier. So we're starting right over at the top there, where we've got those little bits of exposed copper. And then we're just pretty heartily wrapping it. And you want to wrap it quite tightly so it all sort of sits together and after you've done you should get something that looks pretty neat like that and then we just need to do exactly the same for the other side okay so I've made all my cables you see I've got four left over here which is going to be for connecting the battery onto this end and the battery onto the other end there and you can see how the cables are connecting everything together in parallel, we're going positive to positive, to positive to positive, and then all the negatives are connected in the same way along there. And that gives us one large battery bank. All right, so here we are in the battery cupboard here. And we've got all the batteries laid down inside here. So this is gonna be our or battery bank. Now since the last part of the video I actually decided to add a couple more batteries to this now. So we've actually got eight batteries in total, 12 volt parallel wired. The top of this here is where we're feeding in all our wires. As you can see here we've got a wire that goes to the solar charge controller remote for monitoring that inside. Then there's a wire that goes to the inverter remote on off switch. So those are the two data cables that come in. And then I've got the two solar wires coming in here as well. And then I fed those up through a little bit of flexible conduit that goes up here. And that just, there's mice that sometimes get into this area or so. That'll just stop them being tempted to nibble away at those cables. And then here is where they come in. And they go under here and feed in down there and I'm hoping I can get all the cables through that and it's already there so I don't have to draw another one. So how this is going to work because we want to achieve 12 volts with our increased capacity here is we're going to want to go wire them up like this and like this but these aren't in a straight line so what we actually have to do is it's negative to negative, negative to negative positive to positive, positive to positive, the same on this side. And then when we get to the end here, if you imagine this is like the start of the battery pack, it goes over here, then this is where it makes a U-turn, and we're gonna go negative to the negative here, and positive to the positive here, and those are cables are gonna loop around. So we need to make those, and then it'll come along here, and then to get a balanced draw from a battery pack like this, if it was just these batteries, these four here, you'd go onto the negative and you'd connect a lead here, and you'd go onto the positive and connect a lead here. 
because it's acting like one battery and these are like little different cells in that battery so you're going from here and here and that gives you a balanced door for over here what we're going to need to do is exactly the same but because it's snaking round it's actually going to be the positive here and the negative here or you could do the, the negative here and the positive here as long as you're doing it from different sides the battery is completely fine All right, so I've gone ahead and wired this up now. And so, as you can see, just like we were saying, we've got our positive lead connecting in here. It's got a 175 amp fuse on there. It's our fuse for our battery bank. And then we've got our negative lead up on the other side. I've taken those from opposite sides because this is two lanes of batteries here. And that connects together over here. And as you see, it's all on. And I've got this lead from the um, solar charge controller that goes out back into the Buffy. And then we've got this other lead here, which we need to connect up to the inverter. And that will give us control over that. So we'll go and do that now. And there we go. And then we'll go inside now. Is a charge controller. And as you can see, it's fully charged, 12.7 volts. And then we'll go down under here. You won't be able to see this too well, but this is the uh, the control for the inverter. And there we go. And go ahead and turn that on now. So that means you've got on-off control of the inverter from in here. So the next thing I need to do is there's a fuse box inside there, 12 volt fuse box, so I'm going to go and create some wires so we can get all the 12 volt lights and things working. And to do that we're going to need to take a cable from the positive here and the negative here and we're going to run it up through there inside and then connect it to the fuse box. That's the next thing we need to do.